In this video, we're going to talk about the upgrade system that applies to the cities that your settlers are building. So the first thing uh, we're going to do is pop open the hollow tape because this city now has its foundation level. And while it's building, one of the things your settlers will do is move the city planner's desk to somewhere that uh, they feel is more fitting than where you built it originally that will fit within their design. So if you go to tracking options under the tools section of the hollow tape, uh, there's a city planner's desk option you can turn on. I've already turned it on here and that will help you find the actual desk and where they put it. So I can just follow my little icon down here and I'll see that they stuck it inside of this house over here. So uh, the reason we're doing this is I'm going to show you how you can access the supplies menu. So there's a new safe on the city manager's desk. And if you activate that, uh, you'll see it tells you to handle supplies for whatever settlement you're in. So we're in Sanctuary Hills right now. That first section there, upgrade scrap collected, that's how much scrap the settlers have built or collected toward building the next level of the city. So the city requires a few things in order to upgrade. The first component is collecting enough scrap. Now they'll naturally do this over time uh, by collecting scrap in the workbench like they do in the vanilla game. And then you can speed this process up by donating supplies, which uh, that will go into detail in the donate supply section because there's a lot of depth with that. But uh, just know that you can donate any junk and that upgrade scrap collected percentage will go up. Now, once they've reached 100% of this scrap, there's a few other requirements. One is time. Uh, just like plots, there's a certain amount of time that's got to pass before the, before they'll upgrade. Uh, there's also a happiness requirement, and that's pretty much the, the key pieces of this, is making sure that the settlements are generally happy. Uh, for the most part, your settlers will take care of themselves. They'll build things. They'll be happy. Uh, but you can encourage it uh, through the donation system. You can encourage it by helping them meet their needs. Uh, and then the last requirement outside of... Uh, junk collected, happiness, and time is the plots themselves. So uh, as settlers move in, they'll start building plots. Uh, and as you can see, we've got an interior marshal plot built over here. Uh, if we wander around, we'll see that the settlers have started building various plots in different locations. Uh, and the plan, each city plan has a certain number of plots in it. And once they've built all of the plots in the design, uh, that will trigger them eligible to go to level one. So just getting a certain number of settlers will get you to level one uh, and you need to get up to about 70 happiness, uh, collect that scrap and then have a good amount of time pass. Uh, for the level one, it's somewhere around 10 days uh, needs to pass before they will upgrade. And the, the times are designed to be an approximation. Um, obviously, uh, no one's going to be building a giant city in 10 days, uh, but we do want you to be able to see the whole thing in a single playthrough, so uh, the time frame is not realistic. Uh, if any of you out there is interested in a crazy realistic time frame uh, and would like me to introduce that as an option, I'd be happy to do so, but uh, for the time being, uh, we're going to stick with something that uh, seems attainable in every playthrough. Uh, so then after uh, level one is acquired, then to get to additional levels, you basically need to have them upgrade their plots and then they need to reach new tiers of happiness, uh, collect more scrap and the process continues. So in order to get them to upgrade their plots so that they can get to levels two and three, the same systems apply that do in the default sim settlement. So uh, you'll need to fill the meters on the left. And like I said they will fill a lot of the meters on their own through the things they're constructing uh, and you can help them out either through the donation system uh, through provisioners or by uh, building things yourself adding more to the settlement the other thing you can do is if you don't want to deal with the needs of your settlers at all you can go into the hollow tap options this is an option that's been in some settlements for quite some time but i will uh, show you guys once again is that under options if you again if you just want these settlers to take care of themselves completely uh, under the gameplay options and then under, I believe it's difficulty, yes, the citizen needs requirement, you can turn that off. You can also turn that off as a local option. So if you want to keep that citizen needs requirement on in the settlements you're handling yourself and maybe turn it off just in these ones that are controlled, you can do that. Uh, so you have lots of options on how you want to play this. Uh, but the key requirements to upgrade, I'm going to go over them one more time. Uh, so make sure that that donation supply says 100% uh, and that will take care of the scrap requirement. Then there's a time component, which uh, is 10 days to get to level one minimum. And then uh, it goes up slightly for each level after that. And it's there is a slight random component, so it won't be exactly 10 days, but it's uh, somewhere in that range. Uh, they need to get 70 happiness to get to level one and then something more for uh, levels two and three. And then finally, the plots that are designed need to be built. So uh, the best way to do that is to send more settlers to your settlement or let them recruit naturally. Uh, and now if you're not 
not into the uh, system of charisma and you're not going to get a ton of settlers, uh, don't worry. There are options that will be covered in one of the other videos for how you can gain access to more settlers than the default system allows if you don't want to invest uh, in charisma or if you don't want to have to keep sending more settlers here. There are lots of options to take care of all this stuff. So um, just like the Quorum Settlements with Rise of the Commonwealth, I tried to put options in absolutely everywhere so that you guys could customize the experience how you want. So one more time, the requirements are happiness, scrap collection, time, and plots built and upgraded. So handle those things and your cities will upgrade. And uh, one more thing with the city upgrades, by default, it will happen automatically. So as soon as it's eligible, it will happen. You'll get a notice that they've started improvements on the city. And when you come back, the city will look totally different um, with all new things built uh, in the in the place. A lot of the things will be upgraded. You'll see them start adding city walls, all sorts of stuff. Um, now, if you want to witness each of the upgrades independently, or if you don't want them to use scrap in upgrading without your permission, you can go into the hollow tape and there's an option under city build under, I'm sorry, under upgrades to set city building. And I'll just go ahead and show you that now. Uh, I am not going to do a full covered, uh, hollow tape video with this series right away i want to make sure that i have all the options in their final form and then i'm going to get that stuff updated on the wiki uh, because i think it's easier to read these than do a full video on them due to how many there actually are now so under gameplay options uh, and then under upgrade if you change city upgrades to manual basically uh, you can use the tracker which is the uh, the quest option here which let's pop in there to see that so the city manager tracking if you turn city upgrades to manual uh, it will start tracking the cities that are ready to upgrade and then you can come over so if a city is ready to upgrade you can come to the desk and I'm gonna just show you this real quick uh, this city's not ready to upgrade but I'll show you where you would do it you would come to the city plan hit manage and there would be a new option here called upgrade city uh, if it was available and the upgrade city option would then take you into that cinematic mode if you've got it on so that you could watch that all happen uh, up from the sky uh, if you enjoyed doing that and then while we're here I'm also going to show you one more option that's the refresh city option uh, so just like the plots in some settlements occasionally the game can hiccup and just not create things quite correctly so if you find an oddity in the settlement I recommend doing a refresh city uh, and that will basically tear everything down and rebuild it really quickly well relatively quickly it depends on your system on Xbox obviously these these builds can go a lot slower than they do on a higher-end PC uh, but after a refresh city's done if you still see the problem uh, definitely report it on simsettlements.com uh, and we will continue to tweak these builds and release patches so that they all look uh, seamless and and uh, up to the standards that we want so we don't want floating items uh, we don't want things placed oddly we want those things to look good so that you can be proud of these cities your settlers built all right, guys, that covers upgrades. Probably more information than you actually needed. I hope I answered all the questions about how the upgrades work. Uh, as always, if you have additional questions, please post them on the simsettlements.com forums, and myself or one of the support team will gladly get that information to you. All right, guys, uh, in the next video, we're going to talk about interior plots uh, and how they work and what are some of the things to watch out for with them.